We're here at the University of Toronto's Athletic Centre to talk to Townsend Bernard, the number one ranked pole vaulter in the CIS today, to find out what puts him heads above the rest. Okay, so your right will be your top hand, okay. and then your left will be your bottom hand. Like Good, yeah, so you're just gonna hold it there, yeah. and as you take that step, you're gonna push your hands up and bring the other knee oh, up. Okay, all right. Yeah. This is uh, one small step for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Perfect, you're gonna put me out of business. <laughs> Well, after that excellent pointer on the tools of the trade, it would seem to me that Townsend might have a coaching career in his future when he finally puts his pole to rest. As the winter months take hold, most of us retreat indoors to a warm drink and a few extra calories. But here at the Scarborough Figure Skating Club, second year Centennial College student Jordan Hockley and his partner Nicole Kuzmich are gearing up to take the ice dancing world by storm. With the support of his family and a strong sense of purpose, Jordan's last major competition was the 2011 Junior World Championships, where he finished 14th alongside longtime partner Kelly Oliveira. I'm here at the Pazawile Equestrian Center to meet the young ladies who make up Ryerson University's equestrian team and find out what makes riding a horse a whole different ballgame. You're the co-founder of the uh, equestrian team at Ryerson. How did that come about? One of my good friends started the team at York University, which is just around the corner, I guess. And funny enough, the other co-founder, Andrea Robinson, posted on a forum, and I ended up seeing the post. And so I approached her, and the rest is history. It may have been a warm winter so far, but Jack Frost is still holding court over the curling rink here at Weston Golf Club, an ice surface that is bearing witness to the first collection of curlers from Humber College in almost three decades. This is the first team in almost 30 years here at Humber. Why the hiatus there? Well, we've gone through a lot of cycles with sports, and when I first got here was around that particular time, and we had a lot of the small sports. We didn't have an athletic facility at that point. The last four or five years, the college system's really grown, and we have a lot of uh, new students and more money, and not a lot of young people doing it, so I thought it'd be a great way to get some young people playing curling. Hi guys, Josh Craig here in Greektown, asking the people on the street who their favorite soccer player is, why is soccer more popular overseas than it is here in Canada, and more importantly, settling a debate. Who is the better soccer player, in your opinion, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Uh, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to slightly lean to uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Messi. 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 Yeah. I'm going to go for the young blood. Lionel Messi for one reason. Cristiano Ronaldo actually was with Man United, but I do not. I have no respect for him because he just follows money. Well, guys, there you have it. Soccer may never enjoy the popularity that hockey does here in Canada, but the fan culture is alive and well here, at least in East York. And when it comes to the battle of the players, Ronaldo may be pretty, but Messi certainly is popular. They have the power to lift the spirit of even the most jaded crowd to inspire defiance in the most beleaguered team, and most importantly, stoke the fires of fan support, regardless of what appears on the scoreboard. That is the magic of the mascot. This said, any profile of the characters that have come to represent the sporting traditions of Toronto's many schools must begin with a look back. Well before mascots took the form we would recognize today, teams looked to nature for inspiration. George Brown's first athletic director unknowingly created the school's original mascot when his pet husky started attending sporting events in 1967. A beaver found by U of T student Casey Baldwin at Tattle Creek around the turn of the last century became his pet and, after traveling with Baldwin to the university's victory at the first Grey Cup in 1909, became the school's resident mascot. Crosstown rival Ryerson waited just over 50 years to jump on the mascot train, when Eggie the Ram trotted onto the scene in 1961 
after four students looking to bolster school spirit reportedly acquired the ram for $25 at the Toronto Stockyards. For TO Campus Sports, for TO Campus Sports, for TO Campus Sports, for TO Campus Sports, I'm Josh Craig.